You report to the expedition's tent to find not just Utopia, but Security Chief Rhett and Vase as well. I just can't spare any more of my people, Utopia's explaining to them. You've already pulled almost all the foragers, and we're already running skint crews in the ridges as it is. There's one person you can spare, Rhett replies, turning to face you. Hello, Garrett. How would you like to transfer onto one of my hunting parties? Utopia tells me you're one of her best explorers. We could use someone like you. He indicates Vase. I need someone who can keep up with this one. Vase puffs his chest out proudly. Why do we need to kill them? Vase laughs. Because they're killing us, Garrett. Keep up. My Rhett and Vase voices are very similar now. That's not good. I like Rhett. He clenches his fist. It's the classic struggle between humanity and nature, he says. Nature's not all flowers and rainbows. On Earth, everything and everyone was trying to kill each other. For survival, for food, hell, even just for fun. I can't wait to bag a real trophy Zeno, he chuckles. Framing his hands like painting on the wall. The first ten-point buck on Vertumna. Hello, everyone. And welcome back to I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist. We begin our first month of 17. We're getting to explore everyone's, um, I'm assuming, final design. Can we, can we look at ourselves a little bit better? No? No, that's fine. Oh, hey, I guess we can just, like, kind of do this. Cool. Now nah, we'll we'll see everyone individually, uh, but this is what we look like now. Cool, cool. Hello, Dad. I'm glad you're alive. Your dad is sitting on the fence overlooking the animal paddocks, chewing on a piece of grass. Oh, hey, sugar bean. He says, patting the fence next to him. Come to take a look at the wild, dangerous aliens. You watch the float cows bob along peacefully. Every so often, one of them releases a jet of liquid and lifts up into the air. Your dad laughs every time. <laughs> Gross, he says. But I guess not much more weird than what we when we used to drink milk from cows and goats. Kind of different, but I see the point. Oh yeah, and we're super stressed. That's us looking super stressed. We look... We look angry! This is Cal. Damn, bro! You got some gains! Cal is digging at the garden with even more passion than usual. Stupid soldier assholes, he mutters, throwing weeds into a growing pile. They think they're so important. Well, you know, it's harder to grow stuff than it is to kill it. Not that they would know. He sighs and lets himself fall back into the dirt. There's only a war on nature because we keep pissing it off, he says, gesturing to the pile of green weeds. We're an invasive species. Literally. We just gotta figure out our niche in the ecosystem, man. Cool. Hello, adult cow. You certainly got jacked, my guy. Ooh, ooh. Nomi. Looks exactly the same. I guess she is a bit younger, so she doesn't get her grown-up design yet. You and Nomi are talking when sun they suddenly go quiet and look down at the ground. Seconds later, a group of Helio soldiers walk past you, ignoring you and Nomi entirely. Nomi picks at the edge of their sweater. Sorry, they mutter. Sometimes it's just easier if everyone pretends they don't notice me. No, unacceptable. Have crystal. Yeah, unacceptable. You're not allowed to feel sad. Oh, Rex looks different. Somehow he's wearing less than he was before. Over the years, a lot of people have started wearing a lot less clothing than you remember from when you were growing up on the climate-controlled stratospheric. Definitely a lot less than in the holovids you brought from Earth. Rex, though. Rex has really acclimated to Vertumna's hot, sultry weather. Take your own shirt off in solidarity. Man, I need that empathy up. 
Yeah, okay, fine. We'll howl at him. Rex throws his head back and laughs so loud it echoes throughout the courtyard. Ow! He howls. Ah! Ah! Ow! You both giggle, then lock eyes for a few seconds that feel like literally months. Eventually, Rex fixes you with a fangy smile and scratches the back of his head. Does nice things to his whole chest, shoulder, bicep situation. So you like what you see, huh? He lean leans in like sharing a secret. Me too, he whispers, then winks at you. You can look, but you can't touch. Alright, that's that area. I saw Mars up there. Here is Adult Tange. Cute. Have you seen my delinquent brother? Tange asks, already agitated. He was supposed to appear for his vaccinations before leaving on expedition again. Dr. Instance messaged me, like I am his keeper or some such nonsense. She sighs and pinches the bridge of her nose. I am done minding him. If he wants to cough up flower petals for three weeks or whatever else you mind is out there just waiting to infect us, he's welcome to muck around and find out. I don't think I actually have a gift she'd like. I have a crystal anyway. That's fine. I've got plenty. Lots out during glow. You spot Nemi playing darts with a bunch of other soldiers. She throws a dart and it lands clear in the middle of a faceless's well, head isn't the right word, but she soldiers but the soldiers all cheer and clap her on the back. She breaks away from the group and slings an arm over your shoulder. <laughs> Did you see that, Garrett? How are we doing with you? 71. Okay. Not the highest friendship, but I think our romance is still progressing. Log? Log. Not her favorite, but she'll take it. Log, log. There's Mr. Face. Looks the same, just more. Okay, I have nothing for you. Oh, apparently there was a patch for the game in between this and my last recording where the gym now does something. Yeah, we don't have to buy cards now. We can actually upgrade ones we already have. We spend kudos doing it. Maybe we'll do that. Let's go talk to Mars. Mars is watching Holovitz, propping her head up with her hand. Newton's bloody apple, she curses. We have got to start producing our own entertainment soon, or I'm going to literally go mad. Well, have a crystal. How we doing? 170%, 40%. No changes. Apparently they fixed something to do with the backpack, too. That's fine to me. Uh, we did get a few new items that we can get now. Plus $15 skills is pretty decent, actually. Um, plus 30 engineering. My engineering is already almost at 69. Vintage focus device of fidget spinner. Oh, God. All brain cards become... Uh, values become wild. That's actually... Kind of hilarious. Okay. Vert space helmet. I feel like that might be new, and that's literally it. Okay, no, we'll save our kudos for now. Upgrading those cards is probably what we'll spend them on, but no reason to go nuts on it for now. Is Dice out here? Let's see what he looks like. There he is. Oh, wow. He cybered up. This war, Dice says, staring out into the wilderness. It doesn't make any sense. What, what are we really fighting anyway? Nature? So when will it be over? When the planet is empty, except for humans? Dice shakes his head. It sounds awful. Indeed. Alright, well, I'm going to rest on the walls, I think. 
view from the top of the towers is stunning. In almost every direction, you see the untouched beauty of Vertumna spill out before you. Well, except for where they've cut down a bunch of mush trees, and where the expedition's vehicles have churned up the dirt, oh, and where the drainage system has made a big muddy puddle, and, and... Yeah, we get it. It's a gem card, so it might be worth keeping. But it is only a two. Let's get rid of it. Up our values. It's your 17th birthday, but it's not just your birthday. Quiet is a time of new growth, a celebration of life and hope. Not for just this year, but for humanity's presence on Vertumna for years to come. You and your friends are the symbol of that hope. Quite literally, you are the future of humanity. As you're all beginning to take your places as adults in the colony, the council has decided to throw a party in your honor, the Vertumnan Youth Ball. Mars is organizing it, of course. You get an embossed invitation on real paper slipped under your door. Uh, yes. You slip into some party clothes and head over to the lounge to celebrate. Well, yourselves. And yourself, specifically. It is your birthday, after all. The lounge is all decked out. The decorations look expensive. Must have taken a lot of nanoprinter creds. Your friends are transformed, too. Everyone is dressed up and looking like the young adults you're becoming. You can hardly recognize some of them. Mars catches your eye and waves, her bangles jingling joyfully. She looks like a model from the Hollow Mags, every inch of her primped, painted, and perfumed. Oh, Garrett, happy birthday! I'm glad you can make it, she says over the steady thrum of the music. Drinks are over there. Make your song request a congruence and take off your shoes. You look down at your boots and back up at Mars skeptically. She rolls her eyes and does a little bounce. Sock hop! Just like Earth, duh! At the refreshments table, Cal is stuffing his face with party food and Rex shoves two glasses of punch in your hands. <laughs> Gotta stay hydrated, he says, pouring himself another glass. <laughs> we'll be sweating it out one way or another, he winks at you. Don't let them fool you, Tangent mutters, joining you. She smears a glob of something pink and meaty looking on a cracker. It's a well-documented phenomenon that people inexperienced with imbibing alcohol will begin to act as if they're drunk, even if they're completely sober. To Rex, she adds, I mean, of course, that I am not going to suffer any bad behavior. Rex grins as he pulls a flask out of his vest and pours a healthy addition into his glass. Who says it's going to be an act? Let's get a little loose! Come on, it's a party! The music changes to something with a fast-pounding beat. Rex throws his head back and howls. Woo! It's time to dance! Hell yeah, we dancing. You, Rex, and Mars take to the dance floor. After a while, Nemi follows, pulling face behind her. Mm. You all dance until it feels like your heart is going to burst. From excitement, from exertion, and from the sheer joy of throwing yourself around the room with your friends. Nomi, who's playing DJ with congruence, spins up something a little, a lot, slower. More romantic. <laughs> Grab a partner and pull them in close! They announce dreamily, or whatever distance you both feel comfortable with. Love you, Gnomester. Wow, we have... We've certainly allowed ourselves options. No utopia, eh? Shame. Everyone giggles awkwardly and shuffles around, feeling the intangible friction of teenage politics. Who dances with whom? And who makes the first move? Nemi smiles and dances with you, clearly not taking it too seriously. She steps on your toes a few times, apologizes, and then spends the rest of the time making honking noises at inopportune moments in the song to mess with the heartfelt lyrics. You join in and giggle your way through the rest of the song. After your dance, she politely excuses herself and goes to dance with Vase. You see them making out on the dance floor a few minutes later. I might have lost the war for Nemi's heart. After the slow songs, Nomi spins Congruence's music library to something with a little more bounce to it. The dance floor once more floods with bodies ready to gyrate the night away. 
but the tunes are abruptly interrupted by Governor Lum's hearspeak hijacking the feed. He strides to the stage, flanked by Security Chief Rhett. Everyone on the dance floor whines in unison at having some buzzkill adult stop the music, but Lum just raises his hands and smiles indulgently. Ominous music. Look at all of you, he says, young pioneers. I look at you and I see the future, not just of this colony, but all of humanity. You catch a few people rolling their eyes. You've heard this before. Red here, good man, a real good man, really, the best of the colony, shared this poem from a great earth poet, Lum continues. Now, I'm not one for poetry myself, but damn it if it's not something I want to share with you kids tonight, on the eve of something... something really big. Clears his throat and reads from his hollow palm. We cannot tarry here. We must bear the brunt of danger. We, the youthful, sinewy races, all the rest on us depend. Down the edges, through the passes, up the mountain steep. Conquering, holding, daring, venturing as we go the unknown ways. Pioneers, oh pioneers, we primeval forest felling. We, the river stemming, vexing we, and piercing deep the mines within. We, the surface broad surveying, we, the virgin soil upheaving. Pioneers, oh pioneers. Yeah, that's, oh, that, uh, I, uh, I want to do this. But I don't think it's at the right thing. I think it's just at the the reading of poetry in general. But like that poem, especially this bit. I have a feeling Rhett showed it to him as like a warning. And Lum took it the wrong way. Or this is like a power play between the two of them. There's definite friction between them. Rhett looks a little pained, but Lum continues. What do you think that poem means, kids? He asks. Does it mean we should sit here in our colony, politely waiting for this planet to make a space for us? He clenches his fist evocatively in the air. No! He exclaims. It means we need to get out there. We need to grab Vertumna by the balls and make it respect us. Yeah, that's bad. He points to you specifically. I need you, the next generation, to lead the charge. This is your planet, and you're old enough now to defend it. I'm asking all eligible fighters to join squads massing at expeditions, to get out there and attack those monsters where they live. We're taking the fight to them. No more hiding behind our walls. Oh shit, that's really bad. To your left, Vase and Nemi lead the cheering that erupts. Lum and Rhett leave and the music spins back up again, but only a few die-hard partygoers still want to dance. Everyone else is broken into small groups to discuss the announcement. You are... It's bad, okay? This is real bad. We need to be trying to, you know, thrive as a species, but also not make the same mistakes of the planet we left behind. Isn't that kind of the whole point of this? And the gardeners, oh, they're going to retaliate hard. This is bullshit, Cal exclaims, causing a few heads to turn. They're not even going to try to figure out why the animals are attacking us. They're just going to kill, kill, kill. He waves his arm over, arms over his head. Aren't we supposed to be better than that? Dice clearly agrees, though much, though more, much more quietly. They don't even know what's out there, he mutters. They have no idea what they're up against. Only we do. 
party fizzles out as everyone drifts away from the lounge. You return to find your dad has stayed up to make sure you got home safe. He's never done that before. You've always been told the colony was safe. Now, you see his sad eyes, and you know that time is over. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's bad. That's bad, okay? That's bad. You're catching up with Nemi between her drills when she looks over your shoulder and frowns. Newton's bloody apple! She curses, seeming to shrink behind you. She's here again! You turn, and at the other end of the garrison, you can see, see a... Bleh. You can see a small crowd of young soldiers forming around Chief Steward Antecedent. She's handing out lunch tiffins and doing, doling out hugs to everyone who comes within melee range, which is quite a few of them. You've noticed, just from hanging around the garrison, even some of the transplanted Helio soldiers have started calling her auntie. This must be why. She comes by every couple of days, Nemi grumbles, like we're still kids in the creche, playing in her skirts. It's so disruptive. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, Nemi, I kinda don't like who you've grown up into. I mean, I don't hate you, but... We're gonna butt heads, man. Eventually, the crowd around Antecedent thins, and she makes it over to you and Nemi. She greets you with a warm hug. She smells nice, like flour and yeast. Hello, Garrett, she says. Have you eaten? Not yet. She smiles fondly and hands you a tiffin, still warm. It's important to keep your strength up, my love, she says, and pats you on the cheek. Antecedent turns to Nemi. You can almost feel the temperature in the room drop several degrees as Nemi stonily, stonily stares down at her mother. Antecedent's smile grows thin, and she clutches the handles of her basket. How about you, Annie? Have you eaten? Do you need... Nemi scowls and crosses her arms. I'm fine, she says, cutting off her mother. Just like I was yesterday and last week. I don't need you to manage me. I wish Calm was alive. If you're sure, Antecedent responds hesitantly. It's a mother's job to worry, Annie. She reaches out to lay her hand on Nemi's scaly cheek, but Nemi jerks backwards and slaps her hand away. Damn it. Oh yeah, Nemi retorts. You just sit around and worry. It must be nice. I bet you'd like it if that's all I did too, huh? If I quit being a soldier and spent all day cuddling babies and wiping noses and fixing clothes like you did, nice and safe in the creche forever. She's not going to like this. No. Nemi turns her frightening scowl on you. Stay out of this, Garrett. I've never thought that, Annie, she says, laying her hand on her heart. I worry because I love you, and I always will. I'm just doing what I can to keep you safe. Love doesn't keep anyone safe, Nemi exclaims, raising her voice enough that some of the soldiers turn their heads to watch. Her thunderous e Oh, fuck, I really wish I'd kept calm alive. Her thunderous expression convinces most of them to get back to their business. Nemi clenches her fists. Love didn't keep calm safe, did it? she says, her voice breaking. There's no amount of love or worry on this whole stupid planet that can do that. So you... You should just stop, okay? Stop, or, or do something actually useful. I'm never gonna be like you. I'm gonna fight! Oh, no. Mm. Hate you, Vase. Vase peels off from his unit and jogs over to stand beside Nemi. You okay, babe? He asks, putting his hand on Anemone's shoulder. She covers it with her own and angles her body towards him. Yeah, everything's just galactic, Nemi mutters. My mom was just about to tell me again how much she wishes I would give up being a soldier so I can pop out babies and be safe. Antecedent sputters trying to explain herself, but Vase beats her to it. Anemone is an exemplary soldier, Chief Steward, he says calmly. I know it's hard for a mother to accept, but we're all much safer for her service to the colony. He puts one finger under Nemi's chest. I don't- I- I'm trying to like him, but he, I just fucking can't stand him. He puts one finger under Nemi's chin, talking directly to her. And remember, Nemi, that we exist to protect people like your mother, to preserve the bond between parents and their children. Vase gives Antecedent a stiff smile. If the stars align, one day we won't lose any more sons. 
A, s a soft O oh escapes antecedent as she blots her eyes. Oh, you're one of the good ones, aren't you? She says, clearly trying not to cry. Just walking in the footsteps of the good men and women who served before me, ma'am. Vase replies. We couldn't do it without you keeping the hearth lit for us. Speaking of, I'll take lunch if you have any left. Antecedent laughs and hands him a tiffin from her basket, then goes on to her toes to give him a quick hug. Over her shoulder, Vase shoots a cheeky wink at Nemi, who rolls her eyes and snorts. Well, there it is. I guess maybe if I'd done more activities and raised our friendship higher, but... Okay. Looks like I'm gonna have to romance Nemi on another life. Big sad. Big sad. Raise our friendship there. Can't give you a present yet. Screw it then, you know what? We're romancing Tange if we still can. If that's even uh, still an option. Or if we haven't made our decision and lost. Wait, 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 wait! Oh, I think Rex and Cal. Cal and Rex are hanging out in the garden gazebo. You can hear their laughter echo through the garden long before you see them. Hey, Garrett! Cal calls out to you, and Rex lifts his hand in a jaunty wave. Rex told me he wanted my help burying his bone in the garden, giggity. But when we got here, he said he must have forgot it back in his room. Oh my god, yes, giggity! Can you believe it? Rex shoots you a long-suffering look and rolls his eyes. Oh, he's desperately trying to bet you. Are you two dating? Okay, you're not in a relationship. That's interesting that that's an option. I'm gonna have to look at everyone. Honestly, we could romance Dice if we want, but... I said Tanj was number two, and f fuck it. Whoop. I owe almost everything I am to Chief Engineer Instance, Tangent says. She sees me for who I really am. Tanj runs her fingertips over her jaw. Without her, I would probably be as sad and as isolated as my brother, or as broken as my mother was. I owe her my life. I would do anything she asked of me. Wow, our friendship's dropped to 53. Yeah, maybe we, we kind of don't have a romance this time. Actually, to be honest with you, if we were going to romance anyone, Dice is currently in the best position, although we, we've turned away from any of the flirting opportunities we've had. Well, maybe it's too early to give up on Nemi. I don't really know. Don't spoil that in the comments. I'll let them kind of develop as it happens. Maybe we romance Sim, I don't know. Dice is relaxing in the back of one of the expedition vehicles, absorbed in a hollow novel. You clear your throat and he jumps and gives you an awkward but genuine smile. Hey Garrett! He says, pulling his legs out of the way so you can climb in beside him. It's getting harder to find places to be alone here, don't you think? I'd kill to be out exploring, but Utopia insisted we have a rest day, he rolls his eyes. Dice closes his hollow novel and sighs. It's just so crowded here, he complains, and it's boring. I'd rather be out there with Sim, learning about this planet, Dice continues, looking wistful. He folds his hands over his heart. He's so interesting. I could talk to him forever, you know? Like, we really connect. Have you gotten much out of him? Yeah, Dice uh, exclaims, sitting up straighter. Well, I mean, sort of. He still says there's stuff I'm not supposed to know yet, but I figured out a lot on my own. The biggest thing is that this planet is basically all connected, like a fungal network that's so old and complex that it's practically like a computer, he says, talking fast and excited. And not just the mushrooms, the trees, animals, even the rocks in the water. Dice smiles. He didn't want me to know that one, he confides in you, 
but I guessed it. Remember how your dad got sick every year from the pollen? And it was actually fungal spores? Well, I started thinking from there. And yeah, it's like every year the planet refreshes its communication network with fresh spores. It's so cool. I did know that one. Really? Dice says. Well, how about the fact that Dice Sim is really old? Like, really, really old. Dice continues. Like, probably thousands of years old. Sometimes he talks about stuff from ancient history like he was really there. Because he totally was. Dice laughs a little. But he still acts like a kid sometimes, you know? Like, he loves holovids and candy and playing tricks. I did, in fact, know that too. All right, Dice says. He said that you helped him get access to the holovid archive. Good job, by the way. Oh, and... I've seen other gardeners, now that's new, Dice says quietly. They don't look like Sim at all. They look like... Well, they look scary. Whoa, no way. Okay, one more, Dice says, his face going pink. The gardeners didn't have clothes. Sim was naked when I met him. I had to bring him clothes from the colony. I'm not going to tease him because he'll be upset, but whoa. What about you? What has he told you? Well, Dice is listening intently. Sim's hair seems alive. Dice rolls his eyes. Well, duh! Anyone who sees him knows that, he says. It, like, moves, right? I thought I was imagining it. But it's kind of like how plants move to face the sunlight. That's all I know. Wish we could tell people about Sim. I feel like... If people knew him like we do, they'd realize that what they're doing here is wrong. But I'm scared that if I tell someone, Sim will never talk to me again. He says we're not ready. We can't tell anyone what we know. I know. Dice mumbles, sighing as he thunks his head against the window of the cab. I don't want to mess up whatever plan they have. I just want to help, though, you know? I mean, we probably can't trust them to some degree, but I... I like to think we can work this out, you know? Dice nods and turns away, done with this conversation. Fair. Uh, I got nothing you like. I mean, you're alright with the crystal, so I might as well give you one. Alright, let's see what we have access to. All the same. Someone can tell us anything other than all events have respawned. Um, what else did we want to do? We also wanted to. Maybe do some more xenobotany. Maybe some training. Nah. We need to get back out there and see maybe if something spawned. Oh, hey, it's Utopia. Hi, Utopia. Oh, right. You report to the expedition's tent to find not just Utopia, but Security Chief Rhett and Vase as well. I just can't spare any more of my people, Utopia is explaining to them. You've already pulled almost all the foragers, and we're already running skint crews on the ridges as it is. There's one person you can spare, Rhett replies, turning to face you. Hello, Garrett. How would you like to transfer onto one of my hunting parties? Utopia tells me you're one of her best explorers. We could use someone like you. He indicates Vase. I need someone who can keep up with this one. Vase puffs his chest out proudly. Why do we need to kill them? Vase laughs. Because they're killing us, Garrett. Keep up. My Rhett and Vase voices are very similar now. That's not good. I like Rhett. He clenches his fist. It's the classic struggle between humanity and nature, he says. Nature's not all flowers and rainbows. On Earth, everything and everyone was trying to kill each other. For survival, for food, hell, even just for fun. I can't wait to bag a real trophy Xeno, he chuckles, framing his hands like painting on the wall. The first ten-point buck on Vertumna. I don't want to kill animals for fun. Rhett scowls at Vase. You won't be killing them for fun. You'll be killing them to defend the colony. Never kill a living creature. 
No, I, I'm willing to defend myself, but I'm not going out for the hunt. No, fuck you. I'm doing actual exploring. They scoffs. Even if I was trying to kill you, I knew you strato kids were soft. I didn't know you were suicidal, too. Not everyone's cut out for life or death situations, Rhett says, then turns to you. You know, Garrett, it's not all killing, he continues. Sometimes it's about tracking and identifying dangerous creatures before they reach our walls. You wouldn't necessarily have to kill them. He holds up his hand. But you don't have to decide just yet. Talk to Utopia later if you change your mind. Nope. I am here to do exploratory things. I'm not going on a murder spree. That. Are things going to be different now that the soldiers are out here? Oh, this one. Okay, we don't need to trigger that event. We don't need that card again. What about you? I think we've had this one before. Oh, no, okay. You're trudging along when suddenly you're buffeted by a hot wind. No, like, a very hot wind. Lethally hot. The ridges are already baking, but all of a sudden it feels like you're trapped in a nuclear winter reactor. Your skin dries out and your lips begin to crack. Your eyeballs feel like sandpaper. You take careful readings from a distance, triangulate them, and discover the source of the wind. A red, sports ball-sized crystal emanator hiding in a small crevice. When you smash it, it doesn't shatter like crystal. It almost looks as if it could have been organic. Was it some kind of defensive barrier? Yet another weird mystery of the ridges. Skip that one. Is there a crystal? No. How do we get to the, um, the bog or whatever? Oh, hey, it's the flying thing again. Uh, one card gets plus two. Cool, cool. Sure, whatever. That works. Okay, so what if we do... Could've gotten a 49 out of that, god damn. Okay. I think that bumped us, yeah, that bumped us up a thing in bravery. Reduce exploration stress, oh, that's amazing. So we only take seven stress damage now for exploring. Oh hey, it's the bouncing weasels again. In your best wildlife documentary voice, you know that the bounce weasels are probably killing themselves off so the rest of the tribe will have a better chance of survival. Or maybe they're migrating and made a mistake and now they're all plunging to their certain deaths. Such a tragedy. You are totally just making this up. But it sounds good. At this rate, you'll get a great recording of the hideous screeches the animals give as they leap off the cliff. Like miniature battle cries. They send shivers up your spine. You're happy to record it from way, way back here. Well, I got a creativity out of it. 
Flower, good. We can give that to Tang and maybe flirt with her. Ooh. Float cow piss. Crystal. Sim here? Yeah, but he's got nothing to say. That's interesting. Yeah, we'll let it be. We don't need the perception up there. <laughs> yeah, this one. The whole horde comes along. Good thing, too, because a whole swarm of them is coming over the horizon. You're out of there before... Yeah, okay, same line. Sim examines the device for a moment and then hands it back to you. I think you had better hold on to this, Garrett, he says. You may need it later. Ominous. What are we at now with him? Still 40. Okay. Dislikes nothing. That's that's actually kind of hilarious and pretty accurate. Are you sure you don't dislike Ningen? T. Ah, the peaceful rock. Yeah, we take that. Oh, it's the skate on it one. Yeah, no, no thanks. Pass through. Oh, this is the way to go, isn't it? Yeah, it totally is. I missed the other way. Okay, I'll run over there real quick. Uh, honestly, if we can keep our stress relatively low, we can probably do another... Uh, map next month without having to rest first. You and Dice are poking one of the ruined buildings here. A jet black stone cube now reduced to rubble and overgrown with large snaking roots and clusters of bright crystals. Hello, curious little humans, Sim says cheerfully, popping up from behind it. How is the archaeology going? Are you having fun digging up the secrets of the planet? You and Dice ch exchange a cautious look at Sim's tone, but Sim just laughs. I'm convinced the others to, I've convinced the others to allow me to nudge you towards the truth, he says, sitting primly on an outcropping of obsidian that matches his long, oil-slick hair. It's not a trick. Dice fidgets beside you, his face unreadable. Well, Sim says, do you have any questions for me? Are you the Convergent Domain? <clears throat> Sim laughs. Oh no, he says. The Convergent Domain is extinct. As you can see, I am still quite here. The Gardeners are the only part of the Convergent Domain that still exists today. But we are not them, he continues. We were their tools, tasked with protecting the planet's ecosystem. And now we are something more. Did you kill the Convergent Domain? Aw, oh, maybe we pressed too hard. Well, Sim smiles his knowing smile, his eyes alight with the secret. Yeah, that's an ominous time to go secretive, man. I think that's enough questions for today. He stands up and dusts himself off. Who can say what happened to them exactly? The earthquakes that formed these ridges shook the planet around that time. But perhaps it was their own greed and hubris that turned on them. Sim makes to leave, but Dice jumps in his way. Wait, he cries. I have a question. Sim tilts his head, waiting. How do I... What if someone wanted to become a gardener? Dice stammers. Is that possible? Sim stares at Dice for a long time. I'll have to think about that one. Sim answers slowly. Then he leaves, soundless against the sand. 
interesting. That was definitely an important conversation. Can't talk to him. Interesting. I hear a thumper. Guess we can go back to the city. Oh, flying thing again? Yep. We'll wait and see where it's going again. Just a little bit of stress, okay. I couldn't remember if maybe that gave us a bit of bravery. It, in fact, does not. Crystal outcroppings. We've definitely encountered these before. Yeah, we've already encountered this, but we'll take the engineering and the kudos. Definitely another new or an old one again. Card gets plus two. Eighteen versus eighteen. Okay. Yeah, fine. Oh, that's a good hand. Could have gotten a 56. Wow. Wow, okay. I give up too quick. You find more scraps of convergent domain writing technology. Document everything for bringing back to Utopia. Okay, well, hey, that's important. I'm eager to piece together a language. No boss encounter, okay. There was only one more event, but I'm okay with going back now. Oh, no, no. Because it was just one of the opening ones. Maybe we can keep a bit of stress for or free for the next one? Our engineering's almost at max. much care for this war, your dad says, his voice dripping with disdain. I thought we left Earth so we could get away from that kind of thinking. Then a bunch of soldiers show up and all of a sudden we're back where we started. He shakes his head. Don't like that. Not even one little bit. Yeah, me neither, dad. I wish Flulu was here. Wow, we have a lot of the strange devices. Maybe we should keep a few? Sim implying that, like, we might literally need to have some on us later. Oh, I think that was new. It was new. Bring back to the other one. Damn. They were all new and I was skipping them all! I'm sorry, Bars. I failed you. Rex is chatting with one of the young soldiers from the Helio, smiling wolfishly down at her with his hand braced above her head as she giggles. When she sees you coming, her smile drops and she beats a hasty retreat, avoiding your gaze. Rex turns, his confused ex expression melting away to delight when he sees you. Well, hey, Garrett! He exclaims. Some of the Helios are weird about being seen with me, he continues unbothered. 
she'll be back. Sorry, cat being an issue. Don't worry about it. Hey, girl. <sighs> Too soon. Okay, next month. Tan just sitting beside before an array of hollow screens, all showing different graphs. Making decisions based on the mistakes of the humans we purposely left behind on Earth is foolishness, she says between bites of her protein bar. We may as well ask the stars for guidance like astrologers. No, I will not be taking questions at this time. Tutor children. That gives us friendship with Nomi Nomi. And a bit of empathy. Ongly doggly. Let's just head right back out there, I guess. I feel like everyone's gone insane, Dice says, looking around at the increased activity outside the walls. It's not just me who can see that, right? This planet is bigger and older than we can even imagine. If we act aggressive, it's just going to smack us down even harder. Dice spreads his hands. No one is listening. We have to listen to the planet. I'm with you, my dude. Hiss. Three events remaining. Yeah, okay, I'm down with not doing any more of those. Let's explore nearby, because that hopefully won't take a lot of stress, and I'd like to see this place during non-glow. Oh, hey, Sim's here too. Is he just in every area now? That's interesting. Muck hides interesting bugs and other treasure. Yeah, okay. Medicinal roots. Ooh. We take that. Been a while since I've seen one of those TBH. Head of you, the road curves right, steep hill. Is this the boulder? Yeah, this is the boulder. Pass. Gotta make sure we talk to Dice. Easy? Yeah. Hearing an ominous sound. Our goal is one in this round. That's who. I don't know if we can do that, guys. Hi, Uncle Tony. I forgot about you. Gotten a forty eight. Okay, that's fine. Sound is just alien crickets. Hooray! 
I need a little bit of de-stress if I can, please and thank you. Okay, well maybe be a bit more selective because we're running out of room. Let's me talk to Sim first. You're enjoying a relatively uneventful second son of taking readings for one of Utopia's ge geological surveys when... Wow. Your world shifts on a natural axis as Sim comes crashing, crashing, seemingly out of thin air, grappling with a skyfish almost as big as he is. Look out, he calls to you, though it's far too late for that. The ground rushes up to meet you, and it's all you can do to close your eyes and protect your head. To make matters worse, in the ensuing tussle, they completely crush the delicate scanning equipment you just finished setting up. Utopia is going to be so upset. What the heck was that? You yell at Sim, who just shrugs helplessly while he holds the skyfish at bay. It's a whole damn mess! What's he doing, bare-knuckle boxing with skyfish? Honestly! The skyfish flops around pitifully, then springs back into the sky and flies away, trilling in distress. Didn't even look dangerous, really. Garrett! Sim croaks as you turn your attention to him. Blood is pouring from a wound on his chest where one of the skyfish's spines must have pierced his otherwise perfect skin. It's the kind of thing that will definitely leave a scar, or worse. Holding the wound closed, Sim smiles sheepishly. I guess my future sight isn't always 2020. Holy shit, are you going to be okay? Just made a Black Knight reference. He waves dismissively with the hand that's not holding his ding dang chest together. Just but a flesh wound. He says, then smiles. Did I say it right? It's from one of your Earth movies. I quite liked it. He coughs. He and I are similarly difficult to kill completely. He grins. You think it's just a coincidence that I'm always there at the exact time to save you? I knew you could see in the future already. We've discussed this. At night, when I'm in the... When I'm asleep, he corrects himself. I s sometimes see visions of things that are going to happen. Or at least that could happen. My dreams aren't always true. Oh, we've leveled up with him. Up to 60 now. Sim says, wincing as he applies pressure to the wound. The paths branch and converge. Time is more like a web than a line, I think. He smiles weakly, but always in the center. There's you. I can see the future! Too. Probably because I'm the chosen one. You're at the center of my web, too. Sim coughs. I'm flattered, sugar bug. I didn't know you thought of me that way. I can't tell you how this future site works, Sim continues. To be honest, I don't even know. But if you're curious... He's clearly grappling with something and not just a sluggishly bleeding wound in his chest. His voice drops. You might look for answers under the light of the wormhole and glow, he confesses. He presses, you press him for more, but he begs you simply leave him to handle his injury in peace. Is that hinting what we already know? We can do one more. If this is the unicorn, attack it. No. Yeah, this brings our stress down a little bit. Sorry, it's hard to have commentary for the, the card games. Guess I'm kind of just focused on getting the best deal. Yeah, baby! Three stars! Give me that muns. Yes, that's what I wanted. We can keep going. Ooh, a boss.
boss encounter. You've spent so many days and weeks exploring. Some days you feel like you've seen it all, although you haven't gone very far from the colony. You have your favorite places, and you're heading to one of them right now. You like it because only you know how to find it, it's thrilling to get there, it's beautiful. It's thrilling to get there, we'll take the bravery up. Sure, we'll keep the wild card. Thirty-two, thirty. Sure, we'll take the thirty-two. Forty-six. It's got to be the best, right? Forty-seven, apparently. Okay, okay. You have to cross a fallen log over a deep ravine to get there. Today you make it across, controlling your fear and walking steadily without shaking. There it is. Oh, hell yes. Oh, hell yes. You arrive at an orchard of bobber fruit. The sweet, citrusy smell wafts from the red fruit as it... Red it bounces enticingly up and down at the end of long branches. You check carefully for animals. You've seen a territorial bush bu bub here before. But it looks like the coast is clear. You can pick and eat at your leisure. Cool. Might be able to completely complete this place before we leave. And then we can rest and head up the, um... Probably the valley. Oh, we've done this one before. But that's fine, we'll do it again. Card becomes three. Oh, I don't like that. kind of jank, but we'll take it. That's fine, just get me out of this challenge, that one kind of sucked. Moving on. Oh yeah, let's clear up here real quick. We'll give the trees a friendly pat. It's octopus again. Oh, this is a dead end now. Yeah, yeah, because we've expanded out past there. Um, getting our perception or animals up is pointless at this point because they're already at max. That's kind of funny. Hey, Sam. Perception 20. Nothing wrong with the little snow. Spark snow is actually quite pleasantly warm for snow. You continue trudging forward, ducking your head as the hail pummels you back. Ouch. You're still congratulating yourself for being so tough and rational when a snowbank catches your foot and you twist your ankle the wrong way. Owie, owie, owie! Wow. That maybe was not so great. Is it just that one that's left? I think so. Yeah, it is. Alright, well, heck, we might as well finish the whole thing. 
And more roots we missed. Geoponics engineers have set up a work site here using the robo plow to tear up the ground and prep it for farming. We've got some biology, we're already at maxed. You stroll up to the farmers with a wave and take a closer look at what they're doing. They ask if you want to help. Yeah, sure. Plus two bonus to straights. Why, why did that say redraw your hand for a moment? Seems kind of like a waste to... Yeah, it's got the plus two anyway. Uh, do that then. Go boom, 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 boom. Not amazing, but that's entirely fine. Four, four. Take the 41. Could have squeaked a 51 out of that. Well, okay. You feel invigorated and you learn a little bit more about farming. Well, we completed that area like I was hoping we would. Getting those two uh, stress downs really helped. We got some bravery out of that. I think we upped a toughness perk too. Nope. And it's pollen now. Have a device made. Actually, no, have a... You know what, no, we'll keep that because that's actually kind of useful. You can have, in fact, a device. Why should I care for nature? Mars asked, flipping her hair over her shoulder. And the only thing nature has ever done is kill my people. I refuse to be held hostage by a planet that doesn't want us here. She smiles, though her overall expression is dangerous. If nature wants to kill us, well, it's only fair we try to kill it right back. No, bad. Naughty. Oh. That. Pretty sure he was hitting on us. Yeah, here it is. Rex whistles as you approach, giving you a heated up and down with his eyes. Did you do something different with your hair? He asks and leans in to sniff you. New cologne? No, is that a new shirt? Whatever you're doing, it's working for you. He makes a claw with one hand and growls sexily at you, then cracks it up. Did we figure out what he does like? I know he gives it back either way, but... Do you want a fruit? Oh yeah, I brought him a birthday present. Oh, how thoughtful of you to bring me a birthday present! And you know what would make this an even better birthday? He sweeps you up into a squeeze before you can protest. A great big hug! Nice. Uh, sup, Gnomester? You look over Nomi's shoulder and see that they're drawing a whole page dedicated to native vertumnin plants. They look at you and rub their cheek with the end of their pencil. I know we're supposed to believe in Governor Lum, they confess, but, um, what if we accidentally hurt the planet? What if some of the super cool plants and animals die? They look down at their page. I just think it'd be really sad. Crystals for you. Sup, cow? Don't think that one's new. Um... You like... Yeah, you like the bobber fruit and the eggs. Have a fruit. Mm -hmm. 
So we're at war then, Tang says, fiddling with her microscope. I'm of mixed feelings. First of all, nature has been at war with us since the day we landed. So if it takes an official declaration in order to secure more resources for engineering, I accept it. Welcome to the good fight, administration. She pulls back from the microscope and blinks, rubbing her eyes. On the other hand, it's ridiculous to declare war on an intangible enemy. One may as well declare a war on aging. Ha. You are more beautiful than any flower. She grimaces. Please don't say that. She turns to walk away, then remembers herself. Thank you for the flower, she says formally. Yeah, maybe we gotta start younger. That felt really weird to say. You know what I meant. <laughs> Birthday's late wet. We're gonna have to try and make sure we give her a present on that day. Ooh, Xenoag. Give that to Nemi. I haven't seen one of them in ages. You're pretty good friends with Rex, aren't you? Vase asks, giving you a once-over. He must not like what he sees. I wouldn't go telling around telling everyone that. It might not work out great for you. Just a bit of friendly advice. What are you all, homophobic? Do you like roots? Nope. Still don't know what he actually likes. Seventy-six. Okay. Now we got a de-stress. Let's maybe relax in the park this time. Cal likes to spend the evenings outside in the garden with you. It stays warm for a long time out here, even after the last sun sets. It's still so different than the constant temperature of the stratospheric. Living on board a spaceship felt like nothing. You never thought about the temperature or humidity at all. But the weather is always changing here, always a little warm and humid, even in quiet. So we got a bit more bond with the pets. Forget neither of those. Okay, we're all de-stressed now. Anyone got any new events? Are we all good? Everyone all having a great time? I don't really care for aliens, Mars says, examining her nails. Why would I? Humans are far more interesting. Uh, and if the aliens are so cool, why don't they have cities already? She tosses her hair. Checkmate, aliens. Mars, don't be dumb. Like, I love you, girl. You're fabulous, but don't be dumb. Okay, let's just see how these are doing. Three collectibles remaining. Oh, I missed a few. That's fine. Survey the plains and forge in the valley. Time to head out then. So much for being a politician, eh? We've definitely gone full explorer. Oh, Nomi, what are you doing out here? 
When you report for surveying duty, Nomi Nomi is here. It's their first day as a surveyor. They smile widely when they see you, smiling exuberantly. Oh, you two know each other already, Utopia says, looking at to you the Nomi. And that'll make this easier. Garrett, I'd like to keep e I'd like you to keep an eye on Nomi while you're out here, Utopia continues. I'm gonna assign you to the same regions for the next little while. Just make sure they don't wander into a nest of snap ladders, okay? Yay hooray. N uh, Nomi cheers and gives you a high five. As Utopia explains to Nomi Nomi and some other new Helio surveyors about the surveying tools, Nomi starts to get bored and wanders a little away from the group. You see it happening, but are powerless to stop them from tripping and nearly landing in a nest of hop eye eggs. They're just about to crash into the delicate spun glass cocoon when Utopia materializes as if out of nowhere and scruffs them by the back of the collar. Nomi, pay attention! Nomi giggles, like they don't even realize the danger of being stampeded by the upset hop eyes beginning to gather around. Utopia ushers them back to the group before things can get trample e. Nomi asks a million questions about the eggs. Are they edible? Do they have hard shells or soft? What is the cocoon made out of? How long until they hatch? Utopia sighs. Just get out of here, you two, she says, before the cute little varmints turn ugly. Yes, we've got a Nomi companion! I approve. Okay, I think we can afford to try and do every event. Playing in the snow, we already have that card. a bit of stress from it, but we got some toughness. You don't actually have a shovel with you, but you find a bush you can sort of use like a broom to sweep the snow out of the way. The spark snow is lighter and fluffier than you were expecting. Whacking it with your bush causes showers of pretty sparks and tiny popping noises. It takes ages to clear the path, but it's oddly satisfying. Hopefully the next surveyor through will appreciate your hard work. Gotta be careful that things don't blend into the background. Just make sure there's nothing else over here. Oh, well, yeah, flower. Because we did absolutely miss some... Um, I think that might have been patched out. Being able to grab items from across the, the way there. Uh, yeah, we don't want to miss collectibles like we did in the explore nearby area. Train here is strange, some kind of smooth rock covered in lichens and tiny plants. It's really warm and the spark snow melts when it hits it. Card becomes red. Ooh, that's handy. Got a straight there. Comes five. And what if we do it doesn't really matter which one we do, but nice fifty seven best. Realize the ground is alive, it's rumbling very slightly. When you, what you thought was a rock slowly opens. It's an eye! It stares at you dreamily and you stare back fascinated. This must be a very ancient creature. It's so vast, it's completely merged into the surroundings. There are even trees growing out of it. A little animal, like a moth with huge webbed feet, lands between you and the massive eye and starts preening. The eyes dilate, the eye dilates to focus on the moth. Then it slowly closes again in what you think must be contentment. After a minute, you feel a faint rumble under your feet. Regular breathing in and out. Snoring. You creep off the creature, careful not to wake it again. Uh, what was it? National Flesh Mystery Flesh Pit National Park or something? Yeah. A mass of dead bushes blocks your way. They have pointy spines the spi size of short swords and they look very, very sharp. Wow. 
blast your way through it. Good thing you brought a plasma cutter with you. Cut a hole through the bushes. Yeah, we've done this one before. Okay, that's perfectly fine. Oh, hi there. Spark snow is driving down, and visibility is poor. You can barely see your hand in front of your face. Card gets plus two. gem synergy going on here. So if we go four, four, five. Plus one for each gem on other cards. Plus two for each gem on other cards. So 34 versus 35. I guess we'll take the 35. These, these other ones kind of suck. I'm not gonna lie, bro. Sure, whatever, get me out of here. Pain. Could have got a 50. Yeah, we've had that one before. Oh, hey, Sam. I haven't seen you here. You come up on Sim practicing something that looks like yoga. His body moves in very unnatural ways, like he's double-jointed. There's so much possibility in this body, he observes. I cannot help but think humans don't appreciate the limits of their forms. I feel positively nubile. You notice the puncture wound in his chest from the other day is gone. Wow, fast healer. You don't say. Want a flower? I think we've given him the flower before. We should try giving him a different gift. Nummy! Alright, what's the matter, you? You hear Nomi shouting for help nearby. You sprint to the sound of the distress. Yeah, she's not actually in danger. Nomi seems to have fallen at first into some kind of Nomi-sized flower? Is it... eating them? It's engulfed Nomi's upper torso, its petals pulsing as if pulling them down further. You could use your plasma cutter to cut them out of there, if you can figure out what part of this creature to cut without hurting Nomi. Nomi is struggling and you hear muffled sounds of distress from inside. No, this is the one um, where, they, where, the, where, the, where, the, where the, the plant thing gets drunk off it. And so she's totally just in there pigging out and then got stuck. It's five kudos if total equals goal. I might actually do that. 63. That'd be hard though, considering how much we're gonna rock the first two rounds. but I guess we'll take it. Four, four, five, six. 
So 40, 41, 37. Pain. Delicately slice the lyre flower at the underside of the base of its flower, which you guess is the creature's neck. Up close, it actually looks more reptilian than plant-like. Just a little nick, and the creature coughs and convulses. Nomi spills forth in a flood of digestive juices. Ew, 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 yuck, my outfit! Stupid flower! Nomi stomps and shakes her fist at the flower, which lurches away on a fat, snake-like body. I got you, Nomi. But some familiar looking fruit. Hey, you've seen this bush before. That's no rock underneath. It's all part of Yeah, we, I'm pretty sure we've had this before. We'll pick some fruit. You're not letting it get away with being delicious. Grab some of the fruit as the bush bub rises up and roars with anger. Yep, you knew it wouldn't be happy. We'll calm it down. No need to kill it. Five, six, seven, baby! You sue the bush ball, but it doesn't seem interested in letting you have any of its fruit. Could it be the same one you harvested the last time? It lumbers off into the forest. Damn. No fruit for us. Sure, we'll take a bravery up. We've had this one before, and I think we took the bravery up last time, too. Should pick a different one if we want other cards. Maybe just get rid of these. Timey wimey wormhole stuff. Neighbor becomes wild, value is wild. Interesting. Yeah, because that makes it all blue. Okay, well, we definitely want that one here. Super goal of 45, does that mean we get the plus 5 kudos? You lied to me. You aren't scared of some pot or, what, or whatever might live in it. You march up to the edge, blah 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 blah. Go to the crystal cluster. Hooray! Ah, uh, we don't need to do that one. Unless we run out of things to do, you know? But we've definitely already done it before. And we don't need the perception up. I'm not expecting many new events, although all the stuff with Nomi is fantastic. Oh hey, it's the, the really massive thing. You can get another one of those, sure. Oh, uh, we only got it once. Sad, can't load up on that card. It is a really strong card. I think it's like a, what, plus eight wild card? Eight or six. Empathy? 
empathy? Empathy, nice. We've definitely had this one before. The rocks that are alive and play and make creatures who pass by a place Simon says to interact with the world around them. Something big suddenly bursts out from the jungle and scampers across the path in front of you. It looks like a miniature landslide, a bush-covered stone being pulled forward by powerful arms. It's a bush bub, and hot on its heels is a second, smaller one. These slow, thoughtful creatures are rarely so full of energy. They charge back and forth across the pit path as you wisely keep your distance from the powerful animals. But for all the crashing and stomping they're doing, they don't actually seem to be angry swear they were actually being playful? We'll watch. They seem to be playing a game of tag. When the chaser catches up to the runner, they reverse rolls. They do it with such gusto from the surrounding underbrush that the surrounding underbrush is completely crushed in a wide circle. An almost perfect circle. Then, all at once, the first one crouches down on the path and tucks its arms under the bushes on its back. You'd swear it was just a rock now. The second one circles the first several times, sniffing, then crouches in the same position. Now might be your chance to keep passing. Fuck no, we're gonna keep watching. In perfect sync, the two creatures slowly stretch out and up, revealing their rocky bodies and reaching their surprisingly long necks up to the sky. They begin to shake their bushes and rattle their antlers in rhythm, which I which, with which each other as they stomp slowly around the clearing they made with each other. You think they're dancing? The intensity of the dance increases. They're both shaking their back so hard that some of their branches and fruit are flying loose. Instinctively, you reach out to grab a piece of fruit. At that moment, the dancers shift and... Youch! One of them steps on your hand with the full force of its massive body. You let out a cry of pain and clutch your hand to your chest. Oh, that looks bad. The two creatures have been so intent on each other that they hadn't noticed you there. They're so startled, perhaps embarrassed. That they take off running in opposite directions. Well, that was weird. That sucked. Oh well. I think we were mostly done. There might have been one more Nomi event. So we might have to spend time going back there, but we'll see how that goes. Late pollen. Definitely go to de stress now. But I think this is a great spot to leave it off for today. So thank you to everyone for joining me, I hope you had fun, and I will see you all tomorrow for some more I Was a Teenage Exo Colonist.